And so the crowd goes wild as he lands his triple axel. He clears his clean program, does a beautiful spin and ends with a bang. Uh, that's what every athlete, every figure skater would like to hear, you know, at the end of their program, knowing that they're able to come out on top, be the champion and to show the world and represent the country that they represent to show everyone that they are the best. They're able to win and come out on top. But let's not forget, sports is not only about winning. Sports is about the journey and how we are able to get to where we are and use that journey to help us in life. So I myself, I started skating at a very young age. I started when I was four years old and I was very fortunate actually to be able to start this sport, uh, mainly because I had no clue what I was doing when I was four. So uh, I was just very glad because up to this day, I have no regrets for skating because of what it has taught me so far, the values that I've learned, the, uh, the lessons that I learned, how I'm able to apply it to my life and how helpful it has been for me. And I, as I said to many people, I'm definitely not the best in the world and I may be just a few times champion in Malaysia, but when I get out there and compete outside the world, I'm just focusing on myself and my journey and how I'm able to improve myself. Because what's really important, as I said, is how we are going through life and what can we learn from that. Now, for me, I, like I said, I was very lucky to start skating at the age of four. But one thing for sure is the passion didn't come for me when I was four years old. I had no idea what I was doing when I was four. Um, all I remember was just going on the ice, running around, having fun. And maybe we can consider that as a small little bit of fun that I had that sort of ignited the passion. I, I, I think what I can recall is when I started skating, uh, after a couple of years, I think I was probably about six or seven years old, that's when I realized I knew what I was doing, that I was actually figure skating, and I understood the sport just a little bit. And from that, it slowly evolved to, to where I am now, to having the opportunity to compete at the World Championships, to compete at the Winter Olympics, represent Malaysia. And, and for me, that passion grew little by little. And what's very important that we all have to remember is that passion can be discovered. Passion has to grow. And most importantly, it's very, very difficult to keep the passion going. For example, when, when, I, when I was skating and there, there came a point where I just felt like, you know, I want to give up. I, this was it. I felt like, you know, I've, I've wasted a lot of sacrifices to, to do this sport. Um, I didn't get the opportunity to mix with my friends, have a social life. I thought that was it. I was going to quit. And call it lucky or not, timing was great for me because that was when, um, just before I was able to compete internationally and, and see the big guns when I went out to compete. So what happened was that I think I was 12 years old I was going through that moment of contemplating whether I should give up or not. Um, after all, I had already probably been doing it for the past more than six years by then. You know, I think I was eight, eight years of skating already by the time I was 12. And I, I waited a little bit more. You know, I, I told myself, hey, let, you know what, let's see how far I can go. Uh, all the years that I've put into it already, uh, it would be a waste if I had given up at that point. And because I had waited on a little bit more, I went for my first international competition. And that was when my eyes opened. I, I saw the world for what true figure skating was. Uh, I competed with the best of the best of the junior categories, with the Americans, the Canadians, the Chinese, the Russians. And that was when I realized that I may be uh, a hero in Malaysia and maybe the best there, but when it comes to internationally, I'm actually nowhere near a good standard. And that was when it hit me that, you know, I have so much more to learn from other people. What I think I know, it's only a little bit compared to what the world has to offer us. And that was the point where I said, you know what, Julian, I, 
I want to be able to push myself and be able to compete with those competitors on the same level. Because at that point, I was just competing practically by myself. I stood no chance to be even top 10 against all of them. My goal at that competition was to not come last. I came in second last. And that for me was what kept that passion growing more and more. You know, the curiosity of seeing how well I can do, how much more can I push myself and, you know, see how far I can actually achieve if I set my mind to it. And that sort of ignition there with the passion, that, that made me grow more and more in love with the sport, trying to see what I can do, what else is there that's offered within figure skating. So I, I think it's, it's very important that we are all open to try many things out, to discover your passion. First of all, to discover the passion, it's, it's not instantaneous. But one thing for sure is that you'll know it's second nature that you actually like what you're doing. Be it a sports activity, a hobby, your job, that it could be anything you want as long as you have the heart to carry on and try it for the first time and see how that, how that goes. That's, I find, very important. That's the first step to finding your passion. Because if you don't try, you never know. Once you try, whether you like it or not, you've done it, you can say, yes, I did that. If you like it, great, awesome, keep at it, keep trying, who knows, it could grow to something big. You tried it, you didn't like it, never mind, carry on, there's so many more things out there that we can try. So having that open-mindedness and, and giving yourself the opportunity to give it a try. That's the very first step to finding your passion. Now coming back to what I was talking about, about growing your passion, keeping yourself interested. That also requires a lot of your mindset being more open to ideas. Had I not gone for that competition, I would probably not find that passion again. Who knows, maybe yes, maybe no, but for me, I remember very, very clearly that was the turning point where I knew and I said to myself, you know what, I want to do this. And that was, that was so important because if, if I didn't say that to myself at that point, my whole career up to now would not have been what it is. It would be completely different. And, and the other thing about just being open-minded is also giving yourself time. You know, passion doesn't come instantaneously like I said before. What do you have to do? Right, like in, in my case, I wanted to give up when I was 12. I competed internationally when I was 13. So I gave it a year of just trying a little bit more, keeping myself, pushing myself. And that's, that's when, you know, it slowly came together. You never know, it's a, this whole world is very unexpected. We, we, we can't tell how things will turn out to be, right? Time will tell. That's a very, very well-known phrase that we all hear, time will tell. And in my case, time really told, in the end, it showed what it is. So giving yourself time as well, that's, that's one thing you have to keep in mind, especially when you're looking to, uh, to maybe rediscover your passion, reignite it, what, whatever it may be. Now, that's just the first step for, for my whole career, right? Reigniting that passion. But what motivates me? Why, why does this passion motivate me to keep going and training every day, day and night, same routine, every week, 365 days a year? Um, and personally, what I find, that was, that was a lot of my own thinking, my, my self-talk, what I told myself. Every time I, I'm in doubt, when, when the day gets bad or when you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, and, and when, I, when I get to training, I, I feel like, you know what, I feel horrible today, I don't really want to do this. I always ask myself this question, why am I doing this? Why am I waking up every day, early in the morning, going to training? Why? What's the point? And then the answer is very clear. It's because I, I myself wanted that. I wanted to reach a goal, and that was to qualify for the Winter Olympics. And in order to do that, I had to go through every day of training 
in the morning, follow the routine as, as how it's set. So reminding yourself the reason why you're doing this, the reason why you chose this path or chose this hobby, chose this activity, chose this sport, whatever it may be, that is the number one reason why you're doing it. And I find that's the biggest motivation that you can push yourself through day out, day in. Once you sort of tell yourself that, you sort of get back into the groove, you keep going at it, and who knows, maybe you're able to talk yourself into doing something a little bit more spectacular, trying something new, different approach, trying to make it interesting. Because, you know, doing the same thing every day does get quite boring. So if you're able to change it up a little bit in different ways, I think that also gives us a little bit more motivation because I know I find it excites me when I go in and train and, and I find a different way to train today, maybe a little bit less of jumps, more of spins or, you know, just a different routine. It, it's kind of interesting because it's like an experiment. Like, will it work? Does it actually uh, yield more results? I don't know, but I'm excited to try it. And that, that sort of makes me a little bit more intrigued into carrying on. And before you know it, the day is done. You move on to the next day. But a lot of people also tell me, you know, Julian, how, how do you overcome the pressure? Um, you know, with, with, with representing the country, um, competing at SEA Games, you know, I'm sure there's an immense amount of pressure. And the answer, quite frankly, is yes. There is, there is quite, quite a bit of pressure there. Um, and for me, more so pressure on myself than externally. Right, but I'm the kind of person that takes pressure and try and turn it into motivation. I I always like to you know I, I need that little bit of pressure to myself to to keep things going so that the ball doesn't stop rolling, you know. And and when when it comes to a really really tough point in life where, um, especially before the the qualifiers for the Winter Olympics for myself, um, I was in a lot of doubt, a lot of a lot of thinking of. What happens if I don't make it? What happens? What if? What if? A lot of what ifs, right? And, and there was one phrase that came to my mind. Every time I think about it, it just made me push myself, believe in myself. And, and, and that phrase is, if everybody believes in me, why can't I believe in myself? So you have to be able to believe in yourself because without that, your self-confidence just shatters. There's no, there's no hope. If you don't believe in yourself that you can do it, then there's just the lack of confidence there that shows people can see it. You know, and a lot of things we do, whether it's work, whether it's sports, you know, whether it's just talking to people, if you show you that you're confident enough, it most likely will follow through. But if you show that, you know, you're a bit afraid, you're a little bit scared, you know, you're shy, People can tell that, and and that's one one sign that we we try our best to to be able to to give a good vibe to everybody out there, and and don't get me wrong, confidence and cockiness is two different things, right? Confidence is believing in yourself, cockiness is you thinking you're better than everybody else. So it's very important to differentiate that slight factor. And in in another way. What, what else motivates me is the people around me. Having a good uh, social group, good friends, good family, that's very important to, to keep you going with what you're doing. Having the support from them just gives you that extra little boost to, to carry on and, and push yourself because I find without a good support system, it's not impossible, but it's very difficult. So surrounding yourself with the right people, I find it's one of the best ways to help you get, get by every day as well, you know. It's, it's good to also talk to them every now and then. And it's, it's just a great way to, to release some stress as well that you have because you know that they understand you and they want to try and help you as much as they can. So all in all, with, with all this passion and motivation, I think what ties everything in together and, and make you want to do more, make you want to achieve more is starting with, yourself. Knowing what you want to do, discovering what you want to do, and pushing yourself through with what you want to do. That's the most important thing. And from all of that, all that learning, that discovering, this whole process has taught me so many values, especially being a sports person. 
Um, there's so many life lessons that I learned through sports that has helped me in life. Learning how to apply what you have learned. You know, for me, very simple ex example is discipline. Um, a lot of athletes do have a lot of discipline, waking up early in the morning, getting things done by this and this. This has helped me a lot with, with, with school, with work, knowing to respect the deadlines, get things done. Um, and I think what's great about that is it, it has become second nature to me. I don't even think of it as a, um, a deadline, more of as, okay, I have to get this done and it will be done. So it's, it has become very natural for, for me to just adapt to things as well. And I find that really helps, especially with work. Um, there are a lot of deadlines that you have to meet and, and that's one great way to, to approach it. Um, apart from that, if we talk not about sports, but about, let's say, a hobby of whatever it may be, there, I'm sure there are always things to learn. And one thing that I think is very, um, very important that I can share with you is learn from other people's mistakes. That will save you a lot of time. If you're able to not make that mistake, you have already saved that amount of time that the other person has made the mistake. So you'll be able to reach your goal much quicker, much more efficiency, efficiently, because you already know what to do. So especially now when we're not, because I'm a coach as well and I teach all my students, I always try to, to educate them with the mistakes that I've made in hopes that they don't make it and they'll have a quicker pathway to succeed as a figure skater. And that's, that's something that I have applied through not only skating, but even with my brothers. Whenever my brothers made a mistake at home, I would learn. I'm the youngest brother, right? The youngest in the family. So I know that if they did that, I would not do that because I know the consequences they would face and that if I did the same thing, I would face the same consequences. So it's, it's, it's a good way to, to get around things and, and see how it goes. And yeah, just everything that you learn, like I said, have an open mind. There's nothing wrong with learning. Whether you choose to apply it, that's a different story. I always like to to take it in, filter through what I like, and use what I like. It's not everything that would suit me, but at least I know what it is. You know, I've been exposed to it, the experience is there, because experience does help you a lot in life. So just, just have an open mind. Um, listen to ideas, listen to different suggestions, and whether or not you use it, it's a different story, like I said. Just take it in first. Get what you can, and then figure out what works best for you and apply that. And, and with that, I tell you, life will be so much easier in terms of getting around things because you would already know the different ways you can anticipate what other people are doing because you have heard their ideas. And that will give you the extra edge in succeeding. So with that said, I, I hope that all of you guys are able to take one thing or two. Again, have an open mind. You don't have to listen to every single thing I say. Uh, but yeah, just take it in, use what you like, discard the rest, and I hope that you guys have um, learned something from that. Thank you very much.